evening everyone my name is Chris Cooper known as the channel guy trader and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street trading satellite office down in sunny South Florida today's date is Wednesday January the 9th 2013 and here's today's after the bell market summary brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com want to first start by taking a look to see how the indices close here Dow Jones closed up 61.66 points and Nasdaq closed up a little a little over 12 points here 12.04 S&P 500 closed up close to four points here, closing the session out up 3.87 points. We take a look at the breadth here. We had 4,194 issues advancing. We had 2,010 issues declining on the, on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and the AMEX. We had 601 issues making new highs and 28 issues making new lows on the NYSE, NASDAQ, and the AMEX. So positive breadth today in favor of the bulls, of course. It's pretty good how we're seeing this nice positive breath form, uh, you know, start to show some underlying strength, especially today while we're uh, con continue to consolidate in this little range for the one, two, three, four, I would say fifth day in a row here. Okay, so taking a look at the spy for those of you, for those of you that watch the SPY to trade the S&P, uh, we're watching this 144.68 level, which comes from the opening low of the gap up that we had last Wednesday, and we're watching Friday's highs that we made around 146.61. The longer we consolidate in this range and build some type of underlying strength here, um, a bid per se, uh, we could be expect a nice little, a nice fast moment to move out of this little range here. I right, want to see what happens. I like how the Russell 2000 is making uh, all-time highs. Did make all-time highs today again, but it made all-time highs last week Thursday and looks to be shaping up pretty well. Waiting for this volume to come back in here. You can see volume pretty much just dying out here while most of these indices are trading sideways and consolidating from the opening uh, from the gap that we had last week Wednesday. But if the market gets that nice momentum push, a nice easy cash flow trade will be to trade the TNA through 87.50. Just make sure it holds above the 87.50 level. Sorry, not that, sorry the IWM. But if you're trading the IWM and you're looking to make a cash flow trade, all right, most professional traders use the TNA. So the level on the TNA would be it breaking above a 71.16, call it 71.25, and holding above that nice little level right there for a move higher. Okay, so in any case here, let me go back to IWM. IWM looks good. Again, we're seeing these small cap stocks pop up, the dry bulk shippers, these little small cap uh, companies, little lower price end companies. Uh, you know some of the solar companies so there's definitely some action coming into these small cap players and if that's what you specialize in and that's what you're good at it's really your time to shine right now because those things look like they want to push higher it's going, obviously going to take some time you know you're not going to have you may have one stock that pops up 10 percent one day out of those small caps but definitely want to make sure you start building a nice little small list of small cap stocks that could perform pretty well uh, for, for the um, for the end remainder of the first quarter here and I'm gonna make a nice little list and when I come up with a list I'll definitely uh, make sure I distribute that to you guys that follow me here at uh, Wall Street Trading and uh, my personal site of course at channelguidetrader.com alright so let's go ahead and take a look at the triple Q's don't want to forget about the triple Q's All right, Apple has been showing some some uh, relative weakness compared to the market if you ask me alright and therefore um, you know the Q's are holding this level uh, the 6622 level pretty decent here for the past for the past two days or so, and uh, as long as we can continue to consolidate between the 66.22 level and the 67.38 level, we're going to be expecting the same thing as well with the Qs, um, with them pushing back up here and making a new high from the previous week's high. All right, could take some time. We may consolidate a little bit more for the you know for the remainder of the week, or you know we could roll over, but uh, definitely have something to manage our risk off of right here with these consolidations that are forming across the different indices. So watch the 67.38 level on the triple Qs, which comes from this little resistance band of this price action that took place back here in August and September. All right, you can see we tried to break back above that level, but we failed. So there's a lot of supply up here. And uh, again, it's going to maybe take some time to consolidate to try to break through that supply zone. All right, let's take a look at the uh, dollar futures chart to see what the, how the dollar index closed the day out here. A um, little update in the dollar today here. And the strength of the dollar continues to remain the same as we're holding above this key 8025 level. And I'm just basically watching this to see how it's reacting with the market. Nothing real crazy there. More or less, a lot of stocks are doing their own thing right now. They're not really trading off the dollar being weak and the market being strong. How we, uh, how the market was trading in heavy inverse correlation with dollar like it was before. Now we're not seeing that uh, at all anymore on my end, or not as much, you could say. 
Um, and uh, you know, you definitely have to make sure you're in the right stock or the wrong, in the right sector at the right time. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, gold here. Gold is continuing to hold this little key trend line that we highlighted from the little ascending triangle breakout that we had back here in um, back here in August, and we continue to hold this key trend line as well. And as long as we remain above the 1640, we could be building out a little a little range, and we're possibly trading at the bottom of the range right now. If we continue to hold the 1640 level, we could maybe be forming a range between 1640 and the 16 uh, the 1690 area. You see how so far we've been trading that range for the past three weeks or so, and you know we're right here at this key level. So let's continue to watch this area right here. If something shapes up out the gold sector, we'll definitely have you guys in tune with that. If you take a look at the GDX, the GDX still remains below that key channel that I'm watching to see if it try to break back inside of this little shaded area that I have that comes from this prior channel that formed on the GDX that broke down right here. And you can see how this key trend line is still acting as resistance as every time the GDX tries to break above it, it's coming back in. And this is at an angle, so you guys know that's that's the difference between a regular channel, a nice um, channel that's forming at an angle that still you know respects levels as if it would if it was if it was a you know basically a horizontal channel. So some interesting things here, and I and I I'd go over these things in the chat room. If you have not been to our chat room yet, it's mywallstreettv.com. The password to log in is smart, and we have some good stuff going on over there. So come check it out. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of key stocks here. Actually, let's take a look at crude oil. Let's see what USO did today. Crude oil is pretty much flat. Same thing here, consolidating, consolidating right below a declining to flat 200-day, 200-day exponential and simple moving average. The uh, exponential moving average is flattening out here, <clears throat> and the 200-day simple moving average is still declining. So we gotta keep an eye on this right here. Is this? We don't want to get stuck in this thing where if you're buying crude oil up here. And you know it rolls right over as these moving averages are still kind of um, hanging as resistance here. And these are the 200-day moving average, so they have a little more emphasis to them. So that's how the USO is looking. I know some of you guys take a look at the crude oil futures, and the crude oil futures are doing the same thing, basically consolidating below this key resistance level around this 94 area. That 94 area comes from this nice little consolidation that we had back here in August and September that trapped some longs. This is a bull trap up here. And then they rallied it right back up. Resistance held. We sold off and been, we've been trying to, you know, build our way back up in this crude sector in this uh crude oil. All right. And these energy stocks too, they've been trying to build their way up since you know a lot of these energy stocks got smacked down when crude was declining. Alright, so we'll see how this shapes up. A lot of the crude a lot of the energy stocks are looking uh, pretty good again here. I like that this uh Exxon Mobil is trying to hold around this eighty eight level but Better names out there. Take a look at APC. All right, APC looks pretty good. As long as it continues to hold above this uh, 76, 71 area, you could take a look at uh, MRO was another good looking one. All right, still you know, around this little 32 area, consolidating in this little range. Nice weekly chart, nice little monthly chart. It looks like a grinder. Um, some of the stronger ones as well. Not EOG, E, not EGO. I mean EOG. All right, EOG looks pretty good. Uh, another one that looks pretty good, that was shaping up pretty well, was NBL. So there's some names up here. Um, they're a little bit extended. That's why we got to wait for the market to carve out a little bit more of a base, along with these stocks to carve out a little bit of a base so we can have, um, you know, a little area where we can manage our risk uh, a little bit better than how they're set up right now. All right, let's take a look at Apple because Apple again has been showing some relative weakness to the market. AAPL, you can see it's trading below its key 520 level. And this looks to go lower after having that gap up at the beginning of the year on the first when we gapped up last Wednesday. All right, this thing has been in a nice little um, downtrend, as you can see it there. All right, and if it breaks below 510, you can say hello to 500. Remember, 505 has been the area that every time it gets in that area, they buy it up. It's going to be very important to see if they buy, if they buy and hold that 505 bid again. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, I really don't trade Apple. Uh, my partner that sits next to me, he trades, he trades uh, the Apple weeklies and stuff like that. And he does pretty well. So you know we can attack the market. That, you know we can attack the market with the weekly options as well. And Apple, if you're if you're looking to do that, you can come in the chat room. We can help you out with that. All right. So some you know I didn't get to do a midday market update, but we did have some decent callouts in the chat room. We caught a little bit of the Facebook today early in the in the morning session. All right. And if you follow me on the uh, Facebook I 
mention that on my Twitter on my timeline. But STX was another trade that we caught. Take a look at the five minute chart. I'm actually gonna do a trade review on this one right here shortly. Uh, but STX had a nice little ascending triangle. Call this out in the room on the Twitter stream and everything. Our target was 30, 3357. All right, we had about a 20 cents risk right here, getting along over 33, putting a stop at 3280, about a 20 cents risk, and it gave you a nice little two to one trade. You know, nothing great, but a nice little calculated two to one trade off a nice little tight compression pattern, which is this ascending triangle with the volume confirming and everything just shaping up like a textbook play. And that's what we, you know, like to catch all the time. You really don't catch these all the time, but when you do, you know, they're nice, easy layup trades that you could actually read them pretty clean. So let's see here. The other trade that we caught today again was Facebook. All right, Facebook took a little time to get going here, but if you take a look at the five minute chart, it did give you a nice little range to work off of right here. I remember in my in my chat room here I got involved. I got involved on Facebook in my chat room at uh twenty nine ninety and on the one minute chart you can't really see that clean here, but on the one minute chart it kept on having trouble breaking past this twenty nine ninety five level. So I actually got out for a flat and then when it broke over 30 I actually had to put a uh, I actually had to put a bid in to get long now that it was over 30 at 30.05 and luckily it nicked me right here and I was able to ride this up for a couple you know for some for some change there so some good action in the market again there are some stocks that are showing some decent strength and you know you just got to know where the money's at and that's what we try to focus on every morning in our chat room at mywallstreettv.com password to login is smart and uh, make sure you check out what we have on the blog. Got a lot of great stuff, free education, all that good stuff, guys. And I'll catch you guys bright and early tomorrow morning, 8.20 a.m. Room's open. Come check us out. Have a great day. Cheers.